Welcome home. We are so glad that you are here. At Tabernacle of Praise, our mission is to turn the hearts of the people in the community back to God, to reclaim those who are falling by the wayside, and to win the lost to Christ. Each service has been designed with you in mind. Stay tuned for a word from Bible teacher, Gary O'Connor. Good evening. I'm so excited that you are here with us on this evening that we may grow into the full stature of who Christ is, that God has allowed us to come together one more time, that we're meeting here over the airways and what we do know, that God is even present now in this moment. For wherever two or three is gathered together in his name, there he is in the midst of us. The beautiful thing about God, please hit that share button. The beautiful thing about God is that he's omnipresent, that he can be where you are and where I am at the same time. And so we're not separated um, from God. We may not see each other physical and be in the physical space, but since he is uh, omnipresent, he's at the same place or at different places at the same time. We know he's in the midst of us. Please share this message with your son, your nephews, or your nieces, your daughters, um, your aunties, your, your uncles. I get them online or share it with them at a later time. Um, but let us pray and we'll dive into our word on this evening. Father, we thank you for this day that you've given us, that you've been faithful and to perform your word. We pray, God, this evening that you will touch our hearts, that you will open up our ears, that your word, God, will flow and be lifted up out of your scriptures, and God, that will shine as a beacon to our souls. God, we only come to hear from you, and when we hear from you, Father God, we know our lives will be impacted for the greater. We pray for those who are sick, God, who may have lost their way, that you will bring them back home, God, and to the full understanding of who you are, that they may have a relationship with you. God bless this moment we have together. Anoint our ears and our mouths that the words that are spoken tonight, God will be pleasing in your sight. It's in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen and amen. Well, we're in our series, Upgrading Your Lifestyle. We've been in, in this series since the beginning of the year. We're in our third month. And for all of those who have been faithfully attending, I hope and pray that you have seen the growth in your life. I hope and pray that you have been growing daily. You've been growing weekly 
that you've seen yourself in a new level, a new level in God, a new dimension in God, that you're stronger in your faith. And although you may have had some trials, some ups and downs, but that you was able to bounce back. Why? Because you got bounced back inside of you. <laughs> Watch out. Don't get started tonight. Uh, what we're in our series, Upgrading Your Lifestyle. I want you to um, join me tonight in Genesis chapter 17. In Genesis chapter 17. In Genesis chapter 17, you will find there these words. And when Abram was 90 years old and nine, the Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am the almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. And I will make my covenant between me and thee. And I will multiply thee and, um, Exceedingly, and Abram fell on his face and God talked with him, saying, As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee, and thou shalt be a father of many nations. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, but your name shall be called Abraham. For a father of many nations have I made thee. In our series, Upgrading Your Lifestyle, for a thought that we can hang on tonight or a, a pen we can hang our coat on tonight, I want to talk to you about breaking the silence. That's right, breaking the silence. We've been in our series for quite a while we first heard God speak to Abram in Genesis chapter 12. The word was, Abram, leave your country, leave your kindred, and leave your father's house, and go to a land that I will show you. Abram, I'm going to make your name great. Abram, I'm going to make you a father of nations. Abram, I'm going to make you a blessing. Abram packed his bag and headed to the land called Canaan. When he gets to Canaan, there was a famine in the land. Abram does not consult counsel um, or advice from God. Abram decides to take matters in his own hands. He tells his wife, Sarai, we're going down to Egypt. Now, I want you to understand when we get down to Egypt, because you are so beautiful to me, the men will see you and kill me because they're going to want you. Tell them you're my sister. Abram goes down to Egypt without consulting God. And Pharaoh takes in Sarah, but the Lord shows up to Pharaoh and was about to put a curse on him until he returned Sarai back to Abram. And God used public rebuke from Pharaoh to get Adam or get Abram back on the right track. Because anytime you have promise on your life, God will use public rebuke to get you back on track. We learned there in Egypt that Abram left Egypt with a host of people with him. He left with donkeys and camels and sheep and other servants that Pharaoh gave him, and they left with him. Only to get to Genesis chapter 13, where there is a fight that breaks out between uh, his nephew herdsman and his herdsman. And he says to his nephew, he said, listen, nephew, the land that we're in is not big enough for us. <laughs> what are you talking about? A family feud. They are fighting because they don't have enough land. And he said, I want you to decide to go to the left or to the right. If you go to the left, then I will go to the right. Or if you go to the right, then I will go to the left. And the Bible is very, very, very clear to us that Lot chose the land near Sodom and Gomorrah. And he pitched his tent there only to Abram's uh, um, um, the depression where he's sitting there and he is saying, God, you made me this promise, but I don't have anything yet. And God allowed Abram to step outside of his 
tent and begin to say, as the dust on the ground is, he said, that's what I'm going to make your descendants. And we learn quickly that God had a plan for Abram's life, that God told him to step outside of your tent. And he said, I need you to see the land from where you are. So because if you can see it, Abram, in your mind, you can walk in it and have it, Abram. And Abram goes out and for a moment, we will see the father of faith uh, to be able to walk and to continue to hold his head up high. But sooner than later, we learn that there is a war that breaks out. And Solomon and Gomorrah, whole cities and the kings are taken captive. And Lot is among those who are in captivity. But what we learn quickly about Abram was not only was he a man of faith, he was a man of skill and talent. He had over 300 plus men who had skills and he went to war to deliver his nephew and the king of Solomon and Gomorrah. We see after the victory, Abram has this conversation with um, the high priest, Melchizedek. Abram never says anything, but Melchizedek blesses him. And Abram pays him a tithe. We learned that on this faith journey that you have to tithe. That is not just an Old Testament principle. It's what it even it even wasn't in the law when 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 Abram tithed for the first time. It's the principal thing that is required of us. After Melchizedek, the king of Sodom shows up and says to Abram, "Listen, I'm going to give you the spoils of the war. Just give me the people back." And we learned from the Harambai code that we know that Abram had the right to the stuff. But Abram uh, responds and said, I'm not going to take anything from you, king, because I don't ever want you to tell folks you made me rich. And what we learned during that time, although you have the right sometimes, uh, that doesn't mean you should use your right because your right sometimes can scandalize the name of God. And so Abram moves from that place uh, and we discover Abram. In Genesis chapter 15, God shows up to him and said, Abram, fear not. Stop tripping, for I am your shield and your exceeding reward. And we learned that Abram moved from fear and frustration to faith. And we would think Abram would get everything in track. Even in that chapter, we discovered that the Lord Considered it when Abram believed, he counted it as righteousness when he believed. In Genesis chapter 16, some time had passed, and Abram is now 86 years old, and there's still no promise. God had spoken to him when he was 75. 11 years have passed, still no child, still no child. Of his own loins. In fact, he had just told God, I have nobody in my house but this Eliza of Damascus, which we recall means God is my help. I have nobody in this help house but my help. And so Sarai says to her husband, Maybe I wasn't a part of the plan. She made arrangements and had able to have a child by her maid. You know the story. There's a child that is conceived and there's tension inside of the house that that Sarah ends up kicking out Hagar and Hagar goes out into the desert. And lo and behold, God shows up and said, I see you right where you are. He shows up to a single mother with child and sends her back to submit to the promised plan. And during that moment, God went silent. For 13 years. I want you to let that sink in for a moment. For 13 years, God said absolutely nothing to the father of faith. Now, what, what, what amazes me is that in this day and age, um, um, you have many who say God is always telling them something around the clock. The God is already speaking to them around the clock. If you, you, we don't have the spiritual capacity to handle a God who will speak 24 seven. Cause oftentimes what we will learn is that in God's silence, help me tonight, Lord, that he is still talking. 
<laughs> you, you didn't hear what I just said. That even when he is silent, he is still talking. That even when God is silent, he is still sending the message out to us. That God doesn't have to continually be on a microphone telling us what, what do this, do that. No, no, no. Because walking by faith means God send you a word and then you walk out on that word. And Abram for 13 years having heard from God. He hasn't heard from God because he decided to take matters in his own hands. Here we are in Genesis chapter 17 and there has been silence for 13 years. The Bible says when Abram was 99 years old that the Lord, are you listening tonight, uh, that the Lord appeared to him and watch what he says to him. He says, I am El Shaddai. Walk before me and be blameless. He says, I am God Almighty. Walk before me and be blameless. God, you talking about making an interest 13 years of silence. And God interrupts the silence and calls his own name. He says, I'm El Shaddai. Oh, God announces himself when the silence is broken and say, Abram, if you're really going to walk with me, you got to understand who you are walking with. Abram, I reveal myself to you, a part of myself to you, or, or, or an essence of myself, or a title of who I am to you when I first call you. But Abram, I think you're in the point of your life right now that you need to see another, another perspective of what I bring to the table, Abram. He says, I am El Shaddai. I am the all-sufficient one. I am the one who, who needs no help from anybody. I am the one who can do it all by myself. Oh, that's good news tonight. That God doesn't need your help. He doesn't need my help. He's God enough to do it all by himself. Uh, if I went in this room, I'll take a leap or run around this room right now to know that we serve a God who doesn't need anybody to help him. As a matter of fact, later on in the Old Testament, we will read when God looked around heavens and he looked through the earth, the Bible says he can find anything greater to swear by. So he swore by himself. He is El Shaddai. He doesn't need anybody's help. I wish somebody would hashtag that, say he's God alone. He doesn't need anybody's help. So he shows up to Abram and says, I'm El Shaddai. That name El Shaddai mean I'm the all-sufficient one. I don't need anybody to help me. That I'm God all by myself. Um, that I'm sovereign. That I, that, I, that I stand alone. That I'm a class all by myself. I am the God who is sufficient. I'm all competent. I am the one who's an adequate God. I, I, I know what I'm doing and I know how to do it. This is the indication that we see inside the text that God is pointing out some to Abraham or Abram at the time. He says that um, Abram, for 13 years, I allowed you to try to upgrade your lifestyle. Oh, help me tonight uh, in your own power. On your own terms, um, you have been learning, Abram, for the last 13 years, uh, the total inadequacy of your own efforts. Uh, that I don't care how many degrees you have, Abram. I don't care how, much, how long you have lived, Abram. I don't care about the relationships you have, Abram. I don't care who you know in corporate, uh, Abram. I don't care who's, who said they're going to support you and fund you, Abram. You're going to learn sooner or later that it all depends on God. I don't care how much money they have, how much they have invested inside of you. I don't care how much they sing your praises. I don't care how they keep saying they can open doors for you because we're talking about El Shaddai, the also official one who opened doors that nobody can close. Help me tonight. Uh, or who closed doors that nobody can open. He says, Abram, for the last 13 years, I've been allowing you to experience your own inadequacies. I've been allowing you, Abram, to miss the mark in your own effort. Because, Abram, you have to understand that I am El Shaddai. I am the sufficient one. I'm the one with the promise. I'm the one with the plan. I am the one who can able to move things out of your way, Abram. I don't need your help. 
Oh, let me come down tonight. Let me come up for air myself. I'm so excited to, to just, just, just to know how God shows himself up when he breaks the silence. He breaks the silence by reintroducing himself and i hope and pray that during this year when you're upgrading your lifestyle that god reintroduces himself to you like you have never heard or seen or experienced him before that this is the year that you have to see god in a new light you can't keep seeing him like you've seen him over the last years over the last moments of your life but this is the time to seek god as the all sovereign one that he's in the class all by himself and I I know it's easy to say that and I know it's easy to hear that but you got to see it in your your faith and your spirit that he is more than what we just read on paper that he's more than what you just hear about it that he is God when you look up in the sky he's there when you look down he's there when you sit in a chair he's there if you spill a piece of wood he is there that he is everywhere at the same time he said Abram I've been allowing you to do it on your own terms. I don't need anything from you, Abram. So what do what, what to do then? I'm glad you asked. Hebrews helps us out. When God is breaking the silence, the Bible says that without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must first believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligence seek him. So in breaking the silence, God said, oh, Abram, only thing I need from you is for you simply to believe. I don't need you to try to make it happen. I just need you to believe that it will happen. Oh, don't make me run in this place tonight. God just needs you to believe that it's going to happen. And I come tonight to say to you doing this study together that if you believe it, nothing is impossible to them that believe. That's the same message Jesus came with. I just simply need you to believe and he broke the silence by introducing himself it's amazing we will see the same thing in the dividing of the old testament to the new testament that were 400 years of silence where god went silence out of the book of after the end of the book of malachi for 400 years and he broke the silence by reintroducing himself in the name of jesus that you've been doing it your way all this time. Let me reintroduce myself to you to show you that, that the way that you ought to be doing it. He says, Abram, I'm else die. Walk before me and be blameless. So in the new revelation of who God is, notice not who God was. And who God is, a new demand came from God. He says, walk before me, Abram, and be blameless. In the King James Version, it says, walk before me and be perfect. To be perfect, if you would do a word, a word study on that, you will discover it means to... Um, be wholeheartedly or to be wholehearted that God says to Abram, walk before me and be perfect. Be wholehearted. Um, God says, because I'm El Shaddai. He said, because of who I am, this is what I'm requiring of you to walk before me with your whole heart because I am the all sufficient one. I need you to be blameless. So walk before El Shaddai and be blameless be wholeheartedly now no there's none that is perfect the bible is very clear to us no there's none that is righteous that we're all sinners that we're all falling short of his glory that what we do is is that we get back up from our fall um do so a man can sin can continue sin that no god forbid um god does not want us to continue sin but the reality is there is none that is perfect except the one who came and reintroduced himself to us he says, Abram, I want you to walk before me and be blameless, to be um, wholeheartedly. I, um, I need you to um, give me all of you. For God, you have to do 
deductive reasoning here. For God to say, Abram, I need you to give me all the you, God is implying all up into chapter 17, Abram, I have not had all of you. Oh, I know somebody felt that right there. The question is, does God really have all of you? Or does he just have you doing church services? Or does he just have you doing Bible study? Or does he just have you when it's popular to talk about his goodness? But God wants to know tonight, does he have all of you? Or just part of you? The part that you are comfortable with and you're yet holding on to things that you don't want to let go. God wants all of you and not just some of you. Oh, you you need to hit. Let me stay right here for a moment. God says to Abram, I need all of who you are. I need your mind, Abram. I need your spirit, Abram. I need your soul. I need all of your strength, Abram. I need you to understand that I'm giving you all of me, Abram. I felt that. So I need you to give me all of you. Oh, God said, Abram, I'm giving you all of who I am because El Shaddai, the all sufficient one. I'm giving you all of me, Abram. And so I need you to give me all of you. There it is in the text. And he says, I will make a covenant between me and you. And I will make you exceedingly. Look at the text. Read the text. The Bible says, when Abram heard this, he fell on his face. He went to a posture of humility. It's as if God had called him out. It is as if God had read his mail. God said, Abram, I know you haven't been giving me all the you. Because you went down to Egypt without consulting me. You planned with Sarah and Hagar to have a child without consulting him. Abraham, you're on your second strike. And I don't want you to strike out, Abram. I want you to give me all of you. And Abram fell on his face in humility. Besides, he hadn't heard from God in 13 years. And just to hear his voice again I, tonight, just to experience a season of silence where you can't even hear anything that sounds like him, that you try to remember and you try to replay stepping outside the tent and counting the stars in the sky. You try to replay and remind yourself of the conversation about the dust on the ground. You try to remind yourself about leaving Haran and going to the promised land. And everything you keep reminding yourself of still don't feel like the real thing because God is is always moving. He's not just there in the past. Uh, we God said, behold, I want to do something new in you. I, I, I want to upgrade your lifestyle. I got to do something new in you. Uh, yes, what happened back then was good, Abram. But what happened back then got you, you got you to where you are now. Oh, I wish you would put a pen in there right there. What happened back then got you to where you are now. Because of what happened back there, you would have never been right here. He said, I don't need you to just keep looking back. And Abram hadn't even experienced him in those years. So he kept trying to remind himself. And it still didn't feel the same. Until he heard him, he fell down in a plate partial worship. And while he was worshiping, you need to hear this. While he was worshiping, God started talking to him. There it is in the text. The Bible says Abram fell down and God said to him, Behold, my covenant is with you. Oh, I need you to hear that tonight. Behold, God's covenant is with you. That even in worship, God began to speak. Abram went into worship. And if you worship, I promise you, you will hear him. He said, Abram, while he was worshiping, he says, Abram, you will be a father of a multitude of nations. Lord, help me tonight that we discover who we are 
when we worship, ah, when we worship, we discover who we are right where you are now. I dare you to worship him because when we worship him, ah, we discover who we are. God says, I'm going to make you or you shall be a multitude, a father of a multitude of nations. And in worship, ah, God, help me. Her name changes. While he was worshiping, God changed his entire name. He said, your name is no longer going to be exalted father. Your name shall be called father of a multitude of nations. For I have made you a father of nations. Do you hear that? He says, Abram, while you are worshiping me, I want to remind you of the promise. Ah, And that's been some promises on many of your lives uh, that you have forgotten about. Um, but tonight, in the midst of this study together, I, I, if you worship him, I believe that God will remind you that the covenant is with you. If you worship him, I believe he will remind you that the covenant is still active. I believe if you worship him tonight, that God will show you who you really are. He says, Abram, I'm not going to just allow you to stay where you are because when you worship, God always make you bigger. Ah. God, when you worship, he always make you bigger than what you are. You didn't hear what I just said. So he says you were an exalted father, but because now you're hearing from me, now you're going to walk wholeheartedly before me. I'm going to make you bigger than where you are. I'm going to upgrade your lifestyle when I break the silence and make you bigger than where you are. You, Somebody, you need to hear that tonight. He says you've been calling yourself an exalted father, but the next time you introduce yourself, won't you introduce yourself as a father of many nations? The next time you introduce yourself, Abram, huh, because I still have promise on you and because you have given your whole heart, huh, Abram, I want you to introduce yourself huh, that you're bigger now. Why? Not for you to boast about who you are, but to let them know that I'm committed to him and he's committed to me. Oh, I got to get out of here. We got to pick this up later. Um, he says, Abram, not only am I going to change your name, I'm going to change the name of your relationship. Sarah is not even in worship. Oh, help me tonight. Huh? Because the father of the house, and I, I hope we got some fathers who are listening tonight. Huh? Because the father worship. Ha! Huh? Because he wasn't too too macho to, to, to open himself up to God. Because the father worship, he says, I'm going to change the name of the people he's in relationship with. He says, Sarai, names will no longer be called Sarai, is there at the end of the chapter. He says, but as for her, her name will be called Sarah. God moved, changed her name from someone who names me contention to one who's a princess. Uh, he said, you had a lot of tension inside of your house, Abram. Oh, God, uh, because you weren't worshiping. You had a lot of turmoil inside your house, Abram, uh, because you weren't worshiping me. But now that you know what true worship is, that you prostrated before me. Let me slow down right here because you said, well, Abram, he was the father of faith. He always worshiped God. Let, we're in Bible study. Let's do this, scholars. We're in Bible scholars, our school. In Genesis chapter 12, when God shows up to Abram, we don't don't see Abram falling down in a partial state of falling his face down to the ground. We see him packing his bags and leaving. We see when God shows up to Abram again, when Lot separates from him, we don't see Abram falling down to worship. We see him going into a depression state, but he doesn't worship. When God goes, when Abram goes to battle and he deliver his nephew Lot, when God shows up to him again, he is afraid. He is not worshiping. He's frustrated. He's not worshiping for the first time in the Bible. We see Abram fall down in the posture of worship. Uh, and God said, now that you know what real worship is, uh, I'm going to change the whole household. Uh, 
Now that you know who real worship is, hey, mama, I'm about to make your contentious situation uh, a peaceful situation. Now that you know what worship is, uh, while you're upgrading your life, when I break the silence in your household, listen, guys, I know we're in Bible study. I'm trying, I'm trying to control myself and and talk about, but 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 to know that El Shaddai said when you worship me. Oh, God. Um, he said, I will change the entire household uh, when you worship me. Uh, when, when, when men lift up holy hands everywhere, I believe that our sons and our daughters shall come home and they shall be saved. Uh, I believe when the heads of household begin to worship uh, that everything will change inside of the house. Uh, because you decided to worship, uh, I believe that God is doing everything uh, to turn that situation around. It wasn't an accident that you stumbled upon this service tonight. It wasn't an accident that you came because of this Bible study tonight. I believe God had you here for a particular time, for a particular purpose uh, that God knew before you were created that tonight you'll be here hearing these words that God wants to change you. Ah. In the midst of worship, that he wants to change you while you're worshiping. Uh, while Abram is worshiping, he moves from an exalted father. To a father of a multitude of nations. Oh, we got to get out of here. We got to pick this up next week for the sake of your time. But let, let me add this to you before we get out of here. God is saying to Abram. Abram, your new name now means. Or Abram, your name now means exalted father. Your trouble all alone has been. That you were looking for, oh, help me. Ah, I, 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 it's like it's like a river. Um, you've been looking for your own exaltation. Oh, yes, Lord. You've been looking for your own exaltation. Uh, but Abram, uh, now that you're in worship, uh, you got to understand uh, that 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 there's been a shift. Things have to change. Um, he said, you, you got to lose your desire, Abram. I'm trying to listen, I'm trying to keep my cool. Keep your cool, son. Uh, uh, you got to you got to you got to lose your desire, Abram, to exalt yourself. Mm -hmm. You got to stop trying to advance yourself. Uh, yes, I know, Abram, you're upgrading your lifestyle, but you got to stop trying to exalt yourself uh, because God resists the proud. Oh, God. Uh, but he gives grace to the humble. You got to stop trying to exalt yourself. Um, uh, and you got to stop trying to advance yourself. You got to stop trying to please yourself. Uh, your name uh, will be the father from now on, the father of multitude for great fruitfulness going to be the evidence in your life. Mm -hmm. Because now you have learned something, Abram. You've learned that I am the all-sufficient one, and I don't need your help. You can't, Your name can no longer be, 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 made, be, be, be named exalted. But your name now is going to be called fruitful. <laughs> Did you hear that? Because you're going to be a father of multitudes. Huh? There is only one who can be exalted. He said, your name can't be exalted anymore. There's only one exalted father. Oh, God. Uh, we call him Abba Father. There's only one exalted father. He said, your name can no longer be called exalted. He said, but your name going to be made fruitful. And that's what my prayer is this year. That God will make you fruitful. That he will make you fruitful this year. That when the silence is broken, that there will be fruit in your life. Listen, we'll pick this up next week. I got to get up out of here. But tonight you need to worship. Because I believe that the text is teaching us uh, that when we get to a point in our lives that we learn we can't do it in our own power, that we will experience El Shaddai. I believe the text is teaching us when we begin to worship that God would change who we are and change our direction. And not only that, he would change our environment and our households. Brothers and sisters, let God break the silence in our lives and know that he's that close to you. If we could just quiet down and learn in the silence, because the silence is teaching us something. 
when we don't hear God's voice, those are learning moments. He is teaching us something. He is teaching us to depend on him and to walk by faith. Listen, we're out of time tonight. And if you don't know the Lord as your personal savior, you've been like Abram saying, yes, I know I got calling on my life. I know I have purpose on my life. I know there's greatness on my life, but I miss the mark. God, sometimes I take things into my own hands. So, sometimes I want it so bad, God, that I compromise. Sometimes, God, I, 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 make, this, I make decisions and choices that, that set me years back, set me months back, set me back for a while. God, I, that's me tonight. And God, I'm not even asking tonight uh, just for a prayer of, uh, of, of salvation, but I'm asking tonight for a prayer of repentance. Ah, I'm asking you, if you are believing God enough to upgrade your lifestyle, that there's nothing wrong with repentance, that we all should repent daily that we might be saved. Father, we come to you now tonight to repent of all our sins and our transgressions. God, we pray that you were creating us a clean heart and renew the right spirit inside of us. God, never let us rest doing things our own way, but God, convict us, stir us like you've never stirred us before. We give you our hearts, our minds, and our strength. We walk blameless for you wholeheartedly. We belong to you. It's in Jesus' name. And for those who may not know him, simply pray, Lord, come into my life and save me now. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, get yourself inside of a church home. Make sure you're baptized. If you want to be a part of us here at the top, send us a message here on social media. We want to make sure that you are growing into the full stature of who Christ is. God loves you. He's not angry with you. He loves you. Give your heart wholeheartedly to him. We're going to ask you to consider returning tithe to give an offering and so and seed tonight. Those several different ways you can give, which are listed here on our screen. Let not the enemy talk you out of sowing. Let the enemy not talk you out of, out of tithing. God has given seed to the sower. God has demanded that we return all the tithe, all the offerings to his storehouse. The Lord has said to us to never come before him empty handed. So tonight, as we give, God blesses a cheerful giver. God blesses a cheerful giver. It is my hope and prayer that some will receive the 30, 60, even 100 fold return. Listen, as we prepare to leave this place, but never his grace, it is my hope and my prayer that the Lord will bless you and keep you. That his face will shine upon you and be gracious unto you. That the Lord will lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. It's in Jesus' name we do pray. And remember that there is victory in your praise.